Cadmus sends his men away to fetch the needed supplies for a sacrifice. But the sacred wood, untouched by any civilization, hides a ferocious snake, and Cadmus's men pay the penalty for their violation. Let's read through the next six lines. Quem postquam teria locum de genta profecti, in fausto tetigero gradu, de misa quenundas, urna dedit sonitum, longo capodextula dandro, cae ruleus serpens, horrenda quesibila misit, e fluxe rurnae manibus, sanguis queveliquit, corpus, et a tonitos subitus tremor occupat artus. So every time you run into a form of quiquai quad, before you translate it, think to yourself what this word is actually referring to. Sure, we can identify that quem is accusative because of the M, and you probably can also say that it's masculine singular. But is this the snake? Ovid's playing a little game with us here because you're supposed to think that it's the snake at first, when in fact it's an adjective that describes lucum, which is the first word after the Kaisera. Which grove? Tyria has a long A, which means it's ablative with genta, and this phrase, tyria de genta profecti, is a roundabout way of describing the Tyrians. Tetigeru is an alternate form of the perfect third person plural, tetigerunt. It looks like an infinitive because it ends in an eru, but there are a few peculiar things about this word that betray its perfect tense. First, tetigerunt originates from the third principal part of tango which is the perfect stem. Also, however, when we scan the line, we find out that the second to last E in tetigeru is long, which for infinitives is only the case with second conjugation verbs. Tango, by the way, is third conjugation. So tetigeru must be a perfect third person plural. Demisa later on in this line modifies the subject erna. Ovid uses the perfect participle, which shows action that happened before the main verb, in the nominative case, to describe two different actions. First, the urn was sent down, then it gave a sound. Oh, and in followed by an accusative case means into. Kapat here is neuter accusative, and you should look at the prefix of the verb extulit to help you translate the ablative, longo antro. In line 38, we find out the color of our serpent, blue, which is a somewhat common color for mythological snakes. A fluxere is another of the third-person plural perfect tenses with the alternate ending, ere. And again, look to the prefix to help you with the ablative manibus. And in line 40, we have a chiasmus. These last two lines describe the fear the Tyrians experience, told in three distinct phrases. This is called a tricolon. It's very common in ancient writing, and each phrase tends to get longer in succession. First, we have a description of the scene then how the men's appearance changes, and then finally we zoom in on the limbs themselves. Our first two clauses also use verbs in the perfect tense. It's fine for describing action. But the last clause uses a present tense verb, as if the fear is even more vivid. First, the urns fell out of their hands, and then blood left their bodies, and a sudden fear seizes their terror-struck limbs. Let's do one more read-through, allow the vocabulary and the structure to come out, and help you understand the Latin. Quem postquam teria locum de genta profecti, in fausto tetigero gradu, de misa quenundas, urna dedit sonitum, longo capodextula dandro, cae ruleus serpens, horrenda quesibila misit, e fluxe rurnae manibus, sanguis queveliquit, corpus, et a Tonitos subitus tremor occupat artus.